Hey guys, Sister Mira, and this is ATM9. I myself am having a wonderful day. Hope you guys all are as well. So we jump forward back in this main pack. In between episodes, did not do too much. I did do a little bit of crafting. I guess I made myself a jetpack, and uh, what else I do? Nothing, nothing really else. So what we're gonna do today is go ahead and I guess uh, fight the warden. Today is fight the warden day, because that's gonna unlock our first piece of all the With that, we'll be able to do all kinds of fun stuff here, right? So I did go ahead and craft this here, a diamond jetpack. The diamond jetpack is pretty good jetpack here. I want to show you one more thing here too. Actually, I think they're in here. I need a rocket flush. Because I, I needed a way to get some extra uh, leather for something we're going to craft here in a couple minutes. But I needed a way to make them. But you can take rotten flush and throw it in one of these integrated dynamics drying basins. And you get leather really easy. So that was a really easy way to get that. And went that there. I charged this thing in this. This is the charging station, right? So really, really cheap there. Then you can either throw coal in it, or charcoal for that matter, and then pipe power in as well. So I'm pumping in power there right now. And then I was putting in charcoal as well. This thing actually took 25 minutes to charge because this thing holds 30 million RF, right? But yeah, you just uh, throw it in there, it gets charged up. But if you have, I guess, charcoal in, giving it power at the same time, it gets all the power and just moves it into the item. So pretty cool there. Oh, I guess I also upgraded this up to diamond. So just the next tier there. The last tier was doing, I think, 160 RF. I don't know what this one's producing. I have no clue. So I guess that's the thing there. Should show you the jetpacks too, actually. So you start off with this one here. You start with the wooden jetpack, right? And you have to make nine of these coils. I guess that's the most expensive part. Then you go and go to use on that. You'll see you have two options here to level up, right? So I took it to stone next, because, I mean, that's a no-brainer as opposed to copper. Then after that, you can take it, uh, I guess, via iron, bronze, or silver. And each one of these has slightly different stats, right? So every one of them slightly different stats. Uh, but I took it to bronze because it's just uh, copper and tin, actually, to make that, I believe. Copper and tin. Yeah, you just need the dust, right? So just copper and tin. So super easy there. Then once you get that one, I took it to... I actually used steel for this tier, but you could use electrum. Electrum would be cheaper as well because it would be gold and silver. So you'd only have to use half as much gold. Then I think on that tier there... Yeah, actually, you go ahead and you advance up to the next level of coil. And you have to make, uh, I guess, 11 of these as well, right? But they start taking gold. So that's the most expensive part, I guess, for each tier. Then I finally took the diamond. Now, my main reason for wanting to get it to diamond, I guess, in the first place, is um, if you hold shift here, is the uh, hover speed. There's one stat there. There's a whole bunch of stats. But the main one is hover speed. So with the hover speed, it kind of decides how fast you descend when you're hovering, right? So if I use this right now, you look at me. I barely descend anymore. And if you have the lower tier, you descend very quickly. And it makes it really hard to mine blocks while you're flying. I'm paying for that, I guess, with the actual amount of RF it's using for tick, because this one's using 650. But at the same time, I think it's very, very worthwhile. Actually, we won't charge that again. I'll charge it before we go here. So that's cool. Oh, also, to turn the engine on and off, should be V by default. And then the hover is H, which is a little annoying, because it's the same as our magnet. <laughs> so... Yeah, definitely have to change one of those there. Another thing to mention about the jetpack here is that it's ridiculously fast. So if I sprint, this is how fast I go, right? If I don't sprint, I go about this fast here. But you can actually control that, right? So it has an option here. If you hit the comma, actually down the throttle. And if you hit period, you go ahead and up the throttle, right? I find around 60% is pretty comfortable, actually. Even with sprint, I can still control it, right? So I'm going to be probably keeping about there for now. And uh, the one thing I should mention, too, is the period button. I'm pretty sure I had a conflict with my house Sakai, so you will have to go ahead and uh, turn that off or turn it to something else. So just something I thought I'd mention here. So before we go, I'm going to go ahead and make a couple quality of life things, right? So the first thing here is the eccentric tongue. This thing is very useful. This is kind of a book that holds all your other books, right? So if I take that down and throw in my other books and just kind of combine them, they'll all go inside this one book, at which point we'll be able to pull out whichever book we want to, and use whatever book we want to. So it's actually very, very useful, right? So now I have them all in there. I just right click, have access to all my books. So if I want to go back to the tome and have another book, you know what I mean? Just uh, grab a different one, just like that, just left click. And if I want to get a book out of it, right? So you have to do crafting with book or something. You just do uh, shift and Q to actually throw the book out, at which point you can pick it up. And once you're done with it, you go ahead and uh, just combine it again. So just a very, very useful item for keeping all your books in one single place. Another item I want to go ahead and make here is a tool belt. Now, tool belt is amazing. I always make it whenever it's available in a pack. Just a way to kind of manage your tools as well, right? So let's go ahead and grab like five of those for right now. We only Each one of these takes a certain amount of experience to be able to install here. By default, I think this thing has two slots, right? Yeah, it has two slots. Put it here with a pouch here. And then you just kind of do that, craft it up. Each one of these is going to add another slot. 
There you go. At which point we should have seven slots currently. I think it maxes out at nine, right? So with this thing, we just go ahead and just put all our tools in here. Actually, I'm curious too. Can I do this? Yes, yeah, so you can put your backpack here, even if it uh, has stuff in there as well. So it's something to be aware of. Also, if we go to here, go options, controls, keybinds, and go to belt, we can actually set a key here. We'll set this up to random, like eight. There you go. Then hit the eight key. And then we have a slot that's specific to the pack, right? So if we don't need curio slot. We can actually use this and then still keep our curio that we have, the one that does the double jump, right? So just a way to kind of have its own little inventory slot. And now that we've done all this, we just hit the R key and we can just kind of interact with all the tools that we just put in there, right? Just click on them, pull them out, bring up the wheel, sweep. If I want to put them back in, same thing, right? So just a really simple, easy way to kind of manage all your tools, especially when you have like a whole bunch of wrenches and stuff. I like to keep them all in here, right? So very, very useful. And uh, yeah, definitely make this thing. It's it's a life changer. So we're going to hit craft it up the last three items we're going to need here. So I have this one here, the Twilight Cloak. I have a brush. I guess this is from archaeology. And then we have the Nature's Compass, right? So the Nature's Compass makes it so you can actually hunt down, I guess, biomes, right? So I just went here and searched for deep uh, dark. There you go. And this is going to be the biome we need. And it's 1,300 blocks that-ish way. So we'll hunt that way in a second here. Make sure we have everything. Then I made one of these a Twilight Cloak. So this does take the Nebulous Hearts pretty much that we got yesterday was the hardest part of it. You actually have to shift right click to turn it on. So when it's glowing, it's actually working there. When you go to use on this thing, in low light, the player with the cloak in their inventory is invisible. As long as they're invisible, mobs will be unable to target them, even if attacked by the player. So this is going to make the, uh, the Warden very, very easy. We'll be able to beat him about the face as much as you want, and he won't even know we're there. So this thing is straight OP as long as we're in the dark, right? So that's actually pretty awesome. Be able to use that in a lot of places, actually. And I guess this one here, the brush is actually very important too. So we need to hunt down this here, Suspicious Clay in the ancient city, right? And with this, we'll actually be able to find these smithing templates. These smithing templates are going to be used to, one, you can double them up. Very important that you double them up before you use them because they're single use, right? But in the smithing table, we take something like netherite armor, combine it with all the bodium, and then get our all the bodium chest plates, right? Do the same thing with the tools, right? It's the only way to make the armor. So this is actually the only way to make the armors, right? But the tools you can craft with just uh, pure olibodium. So you kind of brute force it, right? So kind of how it works there. And it's going to be very important if you want to do it cheaper because olibodium is much more rare than netherite. So I guess that's the thing. And uh, that's pretty much everything we need. I think we're ready to go, actually. Probably go ahead and uh, head to the buddy there in a second. I'm just going to charge up our armor and then we'll be pretty much good to go. I need to make sure this is on too. I don't even think this thing has durability. I think it just lasts forever. This thing is insanely OP. And anyway, I'm wearing this is in my body now as well, because this has to go in body. So I did that as well. I'm just going to finish charging this up. Then we'll go ahead and uh, try to fight the warden. I guess I'll hunt down the ancient city. So we got ourselves in a ancient city. You see here we're only, what, 28 distance away. We're pretty much there, I guess. Need to go ahead and uh, get that out of my inventory now. I want to grab this brush, make sure we have it. Also, I didn't mention that either. I did upgrade my dank, so I could actually filter much more. You hit O as well, kind of change the settings. I'm making sure it's on filter pickup. That way, whatever's filtered will get picked up there. Also, I have my night vision on, of course, so that's a thing. And uh, I guess we need to fight a warden, and we need to fight our clay. I do want to check these things out. I'm not even going to worry about sounds at all. I'm really just going to let it happen. I don't even know what that is. Warden carapace. I don't know. Maybe I'll grab it. <laughs> I have no idea what's useful there. We're making lots of noise. The sooner we get one, the better. So I might as well just make lots of noise. Spell resistance. I'll grab that. Grab this. I don't know what these rune books are for. Smithing templates. There's all kinds of good stuff in here. I just need to figure out what we actually need. Okay. Well, that's the thing. I'm pretty sure I know where the clay is, too. If we can actually find the right area. Can that go away for a second? <laughs> I wish our night vision would let us see or see through this. Any more seconds that we got here? Three more seconds of darkness. We'll stay high so we don't actually set that off. So you come to this portal here, right? Well, I guess the portalish type thing. Have this little bridge in the front. Then I think they're in this area. I already see them. There's one there, one there, one there. So let's actually grab ourselves the brush. Head down here. And see if we could actually start getting our templates. Just like that. Super easy, right? So there's one. Might have to, we might have some more around here as well. But uh, we do some looking as we kind of look about. But pretty sure they are generally spawning in this area here. Like the front door of the actual kind of like main fortressy thing, right? Cool. That's awesome. 
I'll probably grab a bunch of skulk too at some point. I did bring uh, hose and stuff, right? So if we actually go ahead, pull that out of there, and then hit the arrow key and hunt down our hoe here. Our hoe? <laughs> Don't know if we actually need this stuff, but it's also, I guess, tons of experience. I have that on a small tunnel too, so I could dig straight, straight down, right? Need it back on uh, this. There you go. Yeah, that'd be a lot of experience there. So yeah, maybe I'll just wait until I get one of these uh, these wardens that actually spawn in and fly around and loot some chests because it's going to happen when it happens, right? The more noise I make, of course, the more it'll happen. Ooh, a trident. I actually want that. But uh, I'm just going to do some looting while I wait. There he is. There's the guy. Uh, let's hit R here. Grab our sword. It's a brutal battle, I tell you. This is, uh, this is hard. This is really difficult. <laughs> oh no. Don't, don't be a warden. We're also giving him weakness, which is kind of funny. There you go. Just killed the warden, just like that. So yeah, this uh this cloak is straight OP. It's just insane. It's insanely good. Anyway, what we get here? We got the quest done. So we'll probably hunt it down now. Let's go to I think it's in here, chapter beginning. Right over here. No, this isn't the right one. I don't know what that book is. Should check that. I'm looking for uh something with the unbreaking on it, but I guess it doesn't matter. Uh we need to hunt down the correct quest. Where's it at? Oh no. Where is it? There's a quest here. That was going to give me the stuff and things I did. It's not in here. Okay, I need to hunt it down. So it was the all the modium we're looking for, right? All the modium. Unless there was a sub quest we had to get first, and I did not see that. Let's see. It was over here. Kill the warden. Oh, it's just in the wrong quest line. Oh, it's in the bounty board quest line. There you go. And we got our first all the modium make it. So that's actually fantastic. So that's exactly what we need. And with that. We need to go ahead and uh, make one of these charms, and I think I have everything in my backpack to get that done. So all this stuff here. Oh no, oh, no, I did. I remember to grab this here, a mortar and pestle. Let me clean up my inventory, it's a mess. So I think I have everything we need here. I was actually forgetting coal, so I had to hunt that down. And I checked all the chests that were in the area too to see if we could find a breaking, but I didn't. But this calcinated, all the modium powder, right? To get this stuff, you gotta smelt the dam, you gotta take all the modium, the pestle, this ender powder, which is just that there, and then a mortar, so just that there. Once you have this, you have to run it through a brewing stem. So you do this and that. Uh, we need to go ahead and uh, throw in our bottles. Oh, no, we don't do that. There's a, I need a mundane potion. Did I not bring redstone? What else can make a mundane potion? I kind of forgot about the redstone. I mean, we could head back now really easy. But I forgot completely that we need to do this. So sugar, redstone. Oh, I brought sugar. There you go. I must have planned that out. There you go. Go to drop that off. Put this uh, back in. We'll get ourselves a mundane potion. I guess three of them. That's going to turn this into three all the bodium site potions, which we can then turn into charm of all the bodium site, which is a, basically like a potion that we can turn on and off in charm form. Also, you could add uh, on breaking and stuff as well. So yeah, definitely something that is very useful. So go ahead and put that in there. And that should start that process. I'm going to try real quick to see if we can actually get it enchanted as well with uh, some kind of breaking, just at least on breaking one, just so it'll last longer, right? But I'm not, uh, I'm not hopeful. When you have apotheosis, it always wants to put the, is it soulbound? Soulbound on everything low level. It's very spammy. We'll kind of see if we get lucky here. So we've got three of them. And then I guess we go ahead and uh, open up our thingamabob. Oh, we need to grab these, right? Let's go ahead and grab you. Let's put our potions in. Fantastic. And just that and that. There we go. We've got our charm of all the body of sight. That's cool. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and uh, pop it in here. Wait. Infusion criteria not met. Oh, I forgot they changed this. You can't just enchant it. Okay, you can't just enchant it anymore. Ah, yeah. Okay, there's a way of getting this infused to be unbreakable, and they made it so you can't do low level enchants on it anymore. Well, that that kind of sucks. <laughs> so I guess later on you could make one that was totally unbreakable, but you have to have your apotheosis set up at a certain point there, and once you have that, yeah, you just need a hundred levels. You can make this unbreakable. Okay, cool. It doesn't matter. It'll still last a good amount of time. It lasts more than three potions anyway. I don't know the exact amount of time. I think it's a little random, actually. But with this, we should be able to fly back down here. There we go. Head down this way. 
I had like three of these guys kind of going at the same time at one point. So hopefully they're not all wandering around. But we should be able to hunt this stuff down pretty easily, hopefully. We should see some boxes here before too long. There won't be a lot in this area. Like there isn't a ton of it, but kind of see how it works out for us. I'm actually surprised we haven't seen anything yet. I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, yeah, oh, there you go. There's some there. Cool. I was starting to worry. This may take a while to uh, break here. If you had a lower level jetpack, you'd never be able to do it like that. Oh, you can't mine this stuff either. I forgot about that. You know what? Let's, uh, let's just do this. Cool. And this is the main reason I wanted Fortune 5 on here too, so we get more than one at a time. Stop vein mining system. There we go. There we go. Awesome. So we just got three of them. We need to hunt down whatever else is down here. Really don't know how much we're going to get. I think it's pretty skimpy, and most of it's either in the walls and the ceilings, right? So we'll have to look around pretty quickly. Hopefully we find a decent amount, because this said we could actually do some fun stuff with it for sure, especially a set of armor. We'll have to get some netherite first, but that is uh, not really that big a deal. And we already replaced what we used, right, for the potion. And I guess that was one of the big things. Oh, there's uh, some up there. I need to dig through here. So this one here was really close to the wall. Like, I really had to hug the wall. Oh, okay. Is that one there, too? No, that's gold. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, I had to really hug the wall. So apparently it can be, like, in the outer walls as well. As well as the interior ones, right? So I actually have to go down through this little cave here get back down into the area and keep searching. So just something to be aware of. You may have to hug the wall. So I wanna, I guess, keep making sure I uh, toggle this thing on and off too, so I'm not wasting it. Oh, we got one up in the ceiling, sweet. Let's go ahead and uh, grab this one too. So I'm grabbing all the uranium as well, because well, I want that as well. So then I guess that's the thing. But I think this stuff could be in the outer walls. So I think uh, anywhere in the outer walls, it could kind of spawn, and as well the ceiling. So I've already checked, I think, all the outer walls here. I just need to check the ceiling as well. Ooh, more uranium. Uranium is power. Let's go ahead and grab that stuff. Sometimes you find these veins of, uh, yeah, entire, uh, what you call it, blocks as well. The raw blocks, which is a little weird. But we got 20, all the money so far. One of them actually gave me six with our fortune. So that's actually pretty silly. Ooh, I missed a chest too. What do we got in this one? But yeah, we got the, we're getting a lot of good stuff here. Oh, I felt, found a silk touch. That's actually a really good find. Grab you. I've already killed five of those guys. I really don't want to kill anymore. You know what? Let's just do it. He gives me a blue heart every time I kill him, so... Oh, I need to make sure there's no light around here. Yeah, there's no light. Well, I threw down my waystone, then I forgot I moved my waystone back at home. So I actually have to go ahead and fly all the way home here. It's good I still have some power left in our jetpack, because... Yeah, I just totally derped in that matter. But I did find 20 aluminium, so that is not too bad. But I only found 5 ores total. I've been flying around, but I'm just wasting durability on this thing at this point. So I'm just going to leave. We will be able to double this up with the ore hammer, though. So I guess that's not too bad. And I guess later on you'll have, like, the cultism. I guess you can go to the mechanism option as well. But at some point, I don't think it'll even matter, to be honest. So, yeah. We got our all the modium, though. So that is cool. And, uh... Oh, also, I killed, uh... Seven? Was it seven, I think? Yeah, I think I killed seven wardens. Yeah. So we get a blue heart every time. So I killed seven. And a whole bunch of stuff. I got a whole bunch of loot here. I need to go home and sort out what we got. But all the modium. And, uh, flying home. There we go. We now have a waystone set up. I should be able to just uh, head back to the city whenever I want. I don't have to worry about it anymore. So, yeah. Wish I had moved it, but uh, I definitely did. Also, it doesn't appear to be using any experience at all whatsoever. I guess we'll see if it uh, does when we start doing cross-dimension stuff as well. So, I'm just here doing a little bit of smelting. I already smelted up the uh, first olivodium. So, I just doubled it up with the ore hammer here. So, what we're going to do is uh, make our first kind of item with us. So, the first item we're going to make here is going to be a... Teleport pad. So let's go ahead and grab that. Do this right here. Doesn't really matter where we put this. We'll go ahead and uh, pop this over here somewhere. Then you have to make sure you have both hands empty. And I think you just shift right click on it. And then it should teleport us to a new dimension, which is a mining dimension. So this is the mining dimension here, which is uh, really rad, right? So this is just a straight up mining dimension. There's all kinds of ores down there. No lava. I don't believe there's mobs either. But anyway, we're going to leave there right now. So I just got to show you that real quick. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, work towards, uh, I guess, automating the mining in that dimension as well. I guess it's the next part of it. So I've been doing a bunch of uranium here, getting that done. Is this actually done? I need to go ahead and throw that in there. Make sure we get a bunch of uranium. And then I need to go ahead and start doing some crafting. I guess I also went ahead and smelted down a bunch of uh, graphite as well. And that's basically just charcoal smelted down. So you just smelt down charcoal and you get graphite. What we're going to get into is a power system, right? And that power system is going to be extreme reactors. 
We're then going to use that power system uh, using Uranium to power it to run this here, a builder, which will be able to do auto mining over there for us, but it's pretty power intensive, right? But the builder was actually locked up uh, before this point, so I wasn't actually able to do it. So just like the other stuff there, it actually takes some of the Olibodium nuggets. So let's go ahead and grab that real quick. Let's get everything we need uh, for this as well. Let's go ahead and grab three of those, right? And the builder itself looks pretty easy. That looks pretty easy as well. Uh, we don't have any of that. That's easy enough. I notice this stuff here, these little flax flowers that I'm getting from my flax, can actually be crafted up to die, I believe. Let's go ahead and grab you. Yeah, then I don't even have to use lapis, right? There you go. That looks good to me. And then we should be able to craft that there. There's our frame. With that, we should be able to make the builder. And then we'll need a couple more things here. I'm going to want one of these filter cards. So let's go ahead and make sure we have that. Sweet. And then we need this other card as well. It's called the shape card uh, quarry, right? So first you got to make the shape card, I guess. Let's go ahead and grab some bricks. Fantastic. And this thing's amazing. I use it a lot. <laughs> some might say it's a, a crutch, right? But it's so good at just like sniping exact ores that you want. It's just amazing. I'm gonna draw the shape card. There we go. So this is gonna be everything we need for the actual builder itself. At which point we're going to need, I guess, uh, everything for this. So I may go ahead and do some crafting here. So basically what I'm crafting, I'm gonna be crafting two of these redstone ports. I'm gonna be crafting a little bit of glass. We don't need much of that. A uh, whole bunch of uh, this here, the actual reactor casing. Has to be all basic, right? So we're gonna be doing a little five by five by five reactor. Should produce a good amount of power. Take some uranium and get some smelting those down with these, some of these fuel rods. I'll get to run with 12 of those. Then we'll need four of the control rods as well. Then we'll need two of these uh, reactor uh, solid access ports. So after that, we'll have everything and uh, we'll go ahead and get this set up. You have anything good? No, you do not. So yeah, it was nice knowing you, sir. So I think I have just about everything we need. So let's go ahead and grab that. And what's this here? I don't know what else we got. We got ourselves a redstone site, a redstone site potion. I guess we don't really need that. A couple extra reactor casing. That's good because I wasn't sure if I actually mapped it out, right? And in here I have uh, everything we need. Uh, I made both of the ports too because I wasn't sure which one we needed. I'm pretty sure it's passive, but the quest I think right here, it tells you to make the active one. So there's like active cooling and passive cooling. I think we're doing passive, I think, anyway. I think even here it says uh, you tap into the power that a passive reactor makes, right? So I think that's what we need. So anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll find out either way. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab, what do we need here? I guess everything, right? So let's go ahead and grab up. Let's go ahead and grab all of our casing. Doesn't really matter where it goes. We'll just set up back here somewhere for now. Do a little five by five on the bottom. Looks good to me. Get you out of there. Don't know why I have a sword out right now. I guess that doesn't matter. Then with this, we'll want to, I guess, uh, go up four blocks. Like thus. Yep. They're very simple to set up, but they are quite powerful. I believe they've been buffed for the pack as well. It's part of the reason I want to go ahead and make this kind of reactor pretty much right away. Plus, they're pretty easy to automate as well. Uh, probably only do this on this side, actually. Do that right there. Then we'll have uh, input on that side. Now on this side here, I'll do the same thing, except for I'll have an output over here because we have an output to deal with. Then on the back, we'll probably have uh, two redstone parts, actually. So let's go ahead and do that. That'll be for some automation to uh, kind of control how much power it produces. And on the top here, we'll do that. Then I made a little bit of the reactor glass. It's just, they're more expensive <laughs> than actually making the blocks because you have to add in uh, the sand and stuff, right? But I guess it doesn't matter too much. Not the sand, but the glass. Uh, then we'll have the controller here. So this is the reactor controller. Then we'll also have the power port. I'm going to start with the passive one, I guess, because I think it's passive we did. Let's go ahead and grab you. Let's go ahead and pop you there. And do we need anything else here? No, we'll just have, I guess, one more block right there. So we should be able to pull the power out of that one. That will be the idea. Then up on the top, we need to do, I guess, and the inside, set up these fuel rods. I don't even have enough right now to really do the, there's a ways of kind of, adding mo uh, moderator blocks that kind of have different effect on it, right? Make it more efficient depending on what it is or uh, make it produce a little more power. I don't even have enough to do that right now. So we're probably just gonna go ahead and use water here. I was gonna use charcoal, uh, I guess not charcoal. What are they called there? Graphite blocks, right? That's one for the mod itself. They're relatively cheap, but I can't even afford that right now. So we're gonna go uh, bare bones and probably use water actually. That'd be a good option for that now I think of it. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab some water here. You go. I guess we'll need five buckets anyway, so I have the perfect amount of buckets here. 
go ahead, I guess we have water right here as well. One, four or five. Then up here, we'll go ahead and just put the water in. And you want to put it at like this level right here, right? Sweet. There. There. And water should make it a little more efficient, but it's not going to make it produce any more power. So let's go ahead and pop that in. And we always almost have this multi-block formed if I could uh, deal with this water here real quick. So we should have our redstone ports. We'll put one there and one there. And on the other sides, I guess we need one of these puppies. And then we need the same thing on the other side. There you go. And I have to make the wrench as well. Actually, I'm not sure if this wrench will work. Where's my other wrench? This one here? You might let me swap the ports here. There we go. So one's an input, one's an output. I think the red's the output, but don't quote me on that. We have our multi-block. It looks like it's set up and ready to go. We could test this right away, actually, see if it's working. It should be working anyway. We'll find out uh, which one is the right one. Oh, we can put it in this side here. Here you go. And then I guess the red is the input then. I don't think you put it in the other side. Actually, let's uh, put some more in and make sure. I think uh, once they're set, they'll only go one way. Yeah, we can't put that in there. So it has to go into this side here, just so we know. And you notice there it's turned uh, yellow now because it's full of uranium. Then we just turn it on. Should start producing power here. Of course, the buffer is going to get filled up very quickly, at which point we'll want to turn it off because it kind of keeps burning up fuel here. It's burning 0.107 millibuckets per tick. And it's producing almost 8K power. So that's actually not bad at all. So now that we have that, one thing I want to do here is see if I can figure out how to do the redstone on this to make it a little more efficient, right? Uh, we can't use casing for this. Let's go ahead and hunt down any block but casing. Let's go ahead and grab some cobblestone for right now. Then we'll need a few redstone. We're getting pretty low on redstone as well. Like I've been trying to min-max everything so we could just get to this point and uh, get to the mining dimension, not have to do a lot of other stuff. So here we want to kind of control the reactor. Fuel richness, energy stored, right? So energy, when the energy, what we're gonna do is make this emit a redstone signal. So when the energy is above, I guess 80, 80 be good. Maybe we'll do 90, we'll do 90. And then that's emitting a redstone signal. Then I need to set this one to turn on, right? I think it's just that there. Turn on, no, we want it to turn off actually. Toggle on post, set from signal. Wait, how do we do that? I do want to toggle it, but I want to make sure it's from the right setting. Maybe we'll do the opposite then? Actually, if we could do that, where's that at? It was here, it was the store, right? Ah, wall below. Yeah, we could make it where it's below, actually. That works even better. So when this is below, say, 80%, there you go, it, it should turn on, if I, I'm looking at that right. Yeah, let's try that. Let's go here, let's grab some redstone. Go ahead and set the signal. And that should be working effectively. Of course, we need to test it here. So right now, it'll stay on. Uh, I need something that uses power. This thing uses a lot of power, right? Yeah, let's go ahead and grab, uh, grab our diamond jetpack. Let's go ahead and get it charged up a bit. Drain all that power out, then we'll put that over there and just test it real quick it should be working so once the power in the buffer gets under 80 percent it should automatically turn on that's what i'm hoping for so let's go ahead and see how this works here so if we go ahead and grab an energy cable or i guess a pipe there you go and then set the extract on that is that actually able to pull power it is when this power gets down to i guess uh all oh, these cables are so slow <laughs> i think i have something i can speed that up with a little bit yeah one of these basic pipe upgrades I think that changes that to 1,000 RF tick, right? There you go. That should drain that power much faster. At which point, I'm hoping, once this hits 80%, it turns on. It did not. Okay, so what did I do wrong? Apparently, you have to hit the save button. I didn't hit the save button there. So, yeah, have to make sure you actually hit the save after you change the settings. But now, yes, yes, yes. Now that it's under 80%, it's automatically turning on. And it just filled up again, and then it's turning off. So it's already off again, but... Totally the work did the thing and now that's kind of regulating itself so it's not constantly just burning uranium so that was the next part of this so i've gone ahead and thrown in a better upgrade so i have the improved pipe upgrade this one can move uh 8 000 rf tick which is not too bad and it seems to be working pretty well so once this drops below 80 percent, it should start turning on again there you go it's going to turn on it's going to fill up the buffer then it turns off and kind of fills up a little bit more 
As long as it never hits 100%, I know I'm not wasting power, right? We don't really have any proper power stores yet. So if it hits 100%, it just keeps burning uranium and we don't get anything for it. So I guess that's something we need to worry about. I guess I set it to 75. Uh, I think 75 is fine. Either way, it's working. It's doing its thing. And it's actually pretty awesome all around. So we'll probably work on this a little more tomorrow. I think that's going to be pretty much everything for today. But we need to go ahead, I guess, tomorrow and find a way to move the power wirelessly to the mining dimension. As well, get the builder set up and actually start pulling in resources and getting a whole bunch of netherite, actually, so we can get to our uh, unbreakable, I guess, all the modium tools, as well as our armor as well, because uh, that'll be just right all around. So, as always, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this video. So, as always, guys, like this video, please hit that like button. Really liked it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. See you guys at the next video. Later.